different than the A. Not yeah. negative A. Yeah. Welcome to the to the small, the itty bitty titty committee. There's a difference in full bus and plus size. Mm-hmm. They're sisters. They're not twins. So it doesn't mean just because you have a wider band that you have big breasts. Right. Everybody deserves to have a one well-fitting bra and one that they're not pulling and tugging at every day or all day long. That might be hard to come across. Yeah. I guess that's why it makes great sense to have a personal bra fit for you, especially when you're outside of the normal range of of bra fitting or bra making because there are. Yeah, triple A is the smallest bra cup size, and it is generally less than one inch larger than the under bus measurement. I'm terrible at bra math. <laughs> bra math. I see some people where it's kind of like they really just have a nipple. I wonder if it's worth investing in bras at that point. Like, do you just want to wear a bra? Right. We learn by doing. All those things that I look at and know I can't wear immediately just because of breasts then yeah that's real convenient like to not have to worry about breasts like that yeah. almost like a man so i was hooked yeah <laughs> and more yeah ways fun. <laughs> um, what would you say is the number one struggle for women with small breasts the number one struggle with women with small boobs let's talk about breasts let's talk about you and me let's talk about all the good things and all the bad things Welcome back to another episode of BoobTube. This is episode 54. I am Chantel. I'm your best friend, Jaleesa. And we are glad that you are here to join us for another engaging and interesting conversation. Today, we're going to get into how inclusive we are here at BoobTube. Oftentimes, we have talked about big breasts, but there are smaller breast sizes out there, and we want to be mindful of that. And we also want to be mindful that breasts come in all shapes, sizes, in colors and so that's why we're going to have this conversation today but before we get into that let's take it to the streets do you think it's hard for women with small breasts to find their bra sizes no i mean there are bra sizes to fit everyone uh, whether you are <clears throat> you know, A cup or D and up. What is the smallest breast size you can think of? Okay. Is it a negative A? Negative Well, I won't call them negative, but (laughs) it can go go triple, triple or double A. Triple A? Maybe double. double a. Yeah. Okay. okay. So A would be the smallest. Yeah. Yep. Okay. What's the large? Um, I've heard of a Z cup, but the largest I've yeah they, but the largest I've come across or heard of was like um a K or a L. Yep, they get up there. Do you think it's hard for women with small breasts to find bras in their sizes? No. <laughs> okay. I've never had trouble. Okay. Okay, so again we have like men versus women. Uh the women don't think it's hard for women with small breasts to find bra sizes. Which is I guess is interesting depending on um we'll get into that I'm sure, but yeah, you're right. They didn't think so. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, because even with me with uplifting, they'll be like, well, what about, because it's lifting cups D and up, and they'll be like, well, what about A, B, and C, or whatever, bro? It's like, I mean, you can find Yeah, it. or even if now, I mean, they might have some struggles, some might have, you know, the uneven breast, yeah. and, uh, or maybe, I think I've seen more women that have larger band sizes but small breasts yeah they have issues so maybe if you're like a 46a that might be hard to come across yeah absolutely and that's the whole thing too uh when when i'm talking with other people in the full bus community there's a difference in full bus and plus size so Mm -hmm. even those larger band sizes can have small will have small um cup sizes a lot of times it doesn't mean just because you have a wider band that you have big breasts right so yeah that's interesting and then the men, um, you know, A was tip came up and so did negative A. Yeah, there's no negative out there. <laughs> yeah, you know, 
to get the algebra. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're, not, we're not doing that. Not negative. Out. Hey. Yeah. But you can't have double and, and triple A's out there. It's like my breasts only grow inwardly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be the negative. <laughs> my breasts grow only on the inside <laughs> towards my heart <laughs> and my ribs. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it negative, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, there there are some things that are worth um, acknowledging out there that yes, some women have trouble finding mm-hmm. uh, their their cup sizes when they're shopping, and that there are sizes smaller than the A. Yeah, and I mean, I see some people where it's kind of like they really just have a nipple. Do like you wear, it's so small. Do you go bra shopping for that? Like. I mean, I think now and then they probably wear the small ones that have some padding. Like it might, it's you can't go lower than A. Yeah. So it's gonna be an A cup, but like with some padding. No, you can't go lower than A. What's lower than an A? The double and triple. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's like, uh, but isn't no? Is I thought it's A double A triple A, and then it go to B. Well, okay, so in the negative world, it would go down to that, like the double A, right? The double A is bigger than the A. I'm about to, I'm, I, is this like how it go D, double D, I, triple D? I get D. that, but I remember, I, I, don't know, I might have this wrong, but I do remember this was years ago looking at a chart and I thought it did go down. So started with double, with triple A and then went to double. It went then, like A is like where we start and then you have your double a triple a and then i might be wrong now mm. things be changing but it does make sense the way we have it like d double d etc but i i think i remember looking at that i'll look it up real quick because I now i want to know <laughs> i remember being in like sixth or seventh grade and discussing bra sizes <laughs> and they were like I, I was probably like wearing a double a or something and someone was like <gasps> i thought i was like you don't even know what I'm capable of. <laughs> I didn't know what I was capable of at that time either. Get stuck. Okay, let's try this. Sizing chart with double A bra size. You got to get specific in this. I stuff. know, right? And... Yeah, triple A is the smallest bra cup size, and it is generally less than one inch larger than the underbust measurement. So it does go down. Give me some more. I want to see the thing because where does it say like you in comparison images? to the the double A and the A? Okay. I wonder why would it go backwards for the A's and then not for any of the other letters? Okay, here's one. That purple one. This is why we need standard sizing across the, the nations. This one got four A's. I ain't never even seen oh, that one. I ain't seen that one either. A quadruple A. Okay. I wonder if it's worth investing in bras at that point. Like, do you just want to wear a bra? Right. And this one. This don't have the double A's and stuff on there at all. This one does Italian bra sizes. They just all have double A on there. I don't know. Well, I guess that's so weird, but that's so backwards. It, it, oh, yes, the people who make bra sizes are backwards. Yeah, I haven't dealt with A cups in a long time. <laughs> And I don't personally, even, I don't even know why I was even made aware of that, like why I was looking at that. Yeah, but it's still just like weird. I mean, shame on me, I guess, for the bra fitter for not knowing. But but you won't. I be, really you don't, don't deal though. with. Yeah, yeah. But I don't. That just brings us back to where we talked about bra sizing and how it just needs to be like universal sizing. Because why would the A's move backwards and then B through every other letter? It just goes they made forward. it up because they had already had the A. Um, my, my, probably how I'm thinking. They already yeah. had A through whatever. So, so instead of changing the chart, then they would have to change every single letter at that mm-hmm. point. I mean, yeah, because then if you're A, that will really. If you're double A, that could be a B. And triple A will be a C. So they just have to throw it at the 
This is weird. On the other side of the, of the they line. They have to do that. That's even more confusing because what if somebody be like, a double D is, is smaller than a D? <laughs> Just because they think the double and triple letters go before the single letter. I don't know. But anyway. That's what it is. Yeah. Yep. We're, you know, we're being, welcome to the, to the small, the itty bitty titty committee club because I was like, committee club. Itty titty bitty committee, no club. Yep. Um, because yeah, and they might be looking at us like, duh, how did you not know? I'm like, it's not. I think when we're in a certain size range, we stick to that. Like we don't go, we don't think because even talking to women who um like when I'm in front of audience talking about like our sports bras, they'd be like, Oh, I hadn't thought about that, but I understand what my friends like they'll oh my friend, I can yeah, refer mm-hmm. to it. So it's not like you're thinking about it if that's not your size range. Right. It's been a long time. I don't even think I've 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 fit people outside of like my personal customers, but I still haven't seen an A in a long time. And I wonder what that would look like on a measure when you're doing a measuring tape. An inch of difference. Yeah, but okay, so if you like 32 and you measure 32, what is you what you were you were A? And then if you measure 32, your butts, if you're A, it should take you up to 33. Now, if you triple A, I guess you'll be 32 and a quarter or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. You measuring the nipples, poke it out. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you how you would measure that because usually it's that difference, it's but if there's barely any difference. It would be between thirty three, between thirty two and thirty three, somewhere. So you really just getting real minute with them details. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna be much of a difference at all. No. But anyway, um, that's that. Oh, there's some brands that do cater to women who have small cup size breasts. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them is Pepper. Mm-hmm. Then another one. I ain't gonna mess up how you said it. It was like Mulala. <laughs> Lulalu. Oh, yeah. I think it was like, like they only, I think it was like 28 to 38A. And then there's the little bra company out there. Mm-hmm. Again, they only go up to maybe a B cup. Notori. Yep. They have small ones. And there are other large brands that carry A cups, A, B, and C cups and stuff too. Yep. But those are some that are specifically for smaller breast women yeah another brand we discussed before is skims and they also cater to women who have smaller breasts or cup sizes as well i wonder if padding like if 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 women want the extra padding at all the time when right. they're smaller or if there's some that prefer not to have it yeah if not they might just put on like the the more pullover bras oh yeah but then again they might want to you know spice it up sometimes too but i can see where bras could enhance the wardrobe yeah you know i guess like it could provide some cleavage when you because you can still get cleavage with smaller breasts so Mm -hmm. i can see where that comes in handy i wouldn't mind just going bra free it's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They're the one like when it comes to wearing those cute tops and all those things that I look at and know I can't wear immediately just because of breasts, then yeah, that's real convenient. Like to not have to worry about breasts like that. Yeah. Almost like a man. Some of them have breasts though. Yeah. More than triple A and A and double A and B and C. I know Mastasia. Got a mass, got a comastia. Got a comastia. <laughs> there we go. So, we want to learn a little more about this. So, we're going to go ahead and bring in a guest to give us some more insight that obviously we don't have because we live in a bigger breast world personally in our personal lives. So, we would like to get someone else to give us some input. Let's see what they have to say. Joining us in this inclusive conversation is Christine Stutley with Blush Bras. Welcome, Christine. Hi. (laughs) Thank you for joining us. We have some a lot to get into to learn about you and the bra making experiences that you 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 uh, provide to the community. Uh, So, how did you get into creating custom bras? 
Uh, <laughs> kind of in an interesting way. I got into making bras generally. I've sewn my whole life. But my mother-in-law had found an ad or was reading the local newspaper and there was an ad advertising a sewing class on to make your own bras. And so she like tongue in cheek kind of said to me, hey, do you want to take this class and then you can make mine? So uh, <laughs> I took the class. I have a little bit of a different experience than some other um, people that get into making their own bras in the home sewing community is that the lady who had... Uh, initially uh, taught the class, uh, we went in a week before and got fitted. So the wire was chosen, um, the cup was chosen, there were a bunch of measurements taken, and she drafted your pattern to your body. And then on the day of the, the, the weekend of the sewing class, or the two days that it was, uh, we each had our own personal pattern. So we were actually constructing our own bra. And then uh, when the class was finished, you put the bra on and it more or less fit. So nice. I was hooked. Yeah. <laughs> and more yeah. ways than one. <laughs> yeah. And then she offered more classes, um, you know, working with lace, working with foam. And then I continued into the whole custom bra making or professional bra making course that she then offered. So more or less doing the execs, learning all the tricks of the trade and then just playing around. <laughs> That's how we learn. We learn by doing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's kind of how I got into it. That was mm -hmm. cool. So, you know, we are focusing this episode specifically on smaller breasts. Mm -hmm. and, um, neither one of us are experts in that area. So that's why we're getting all of the insight from you. Um, what would you say is the number one struggle for women with small breasts? I guess part of it is I've had a few small busted ladies uh, come in. Mostly it's larger sizes, but I want to say regardless, we all have the same fit or uh, discomfort issues with bras. Mm -hmm. Um, I am lucky enough to shop at any of the, the, um, big box retailers. They carry my size. Uh, I think what happens, the number one struggle with women with sm small boobs, and I'm going to say it's the same thing probably with large busted is that the wire to cup size isn't, doesn't always correlate. So meaning if you have a lower profile uh, tissue or boob, usually we need a wider wire than what is um, in the in the stat. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. But then you also have the same thing with large or full cup is that what's the ratio between underband and cup size, right? So when you say small, small busted, it's like, well, are you dealing with a 42 inch chest and small busted, or are you dealing with a 26 inch like rib cage and small busted, right? There's just such that range. And when you're outside that range, I think it gets more and more difficult to fit and it to be comfortable because either the wire pokes and the cup fits or the wire mm -hmm. fits and the cup is too big. Does that make sense? It's like you got to pitch out the middle. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm sure you experience kind of the same thing, right? Like, oh, the cup fits, but the wire is halfway around my back. Yeah. Yeah. Or sometimes it can be a little too high on the side. And yeah. Fill it. yeah. Yeah. Or not finding the right shape maybe or a brand that carries it or yeah that sort of thing and then of course um a big thing just generally nobody wants their apexes like pointing all this way we want them to be <laughs> up in center front so that i think that depending on the style of the bra will determine what's going on there too absolutely 
Are there any other struggles that women with small busts deal with um, that people may not be aware of? I know like sizing and finding that bra, um, that fit, you talked about that. Is there anything else we might not be thinking of or aware of that they might be dealing with? I'm going to say it's probably very similar to the other end of the range. Okay. Maybe strap width is too wide because okay. if everything is smaller, um, I've dealt with some ladies that have a 26 inch rib cage and below, right? And then you think, oh, this will fit them really well. But then the straps are like literally off their shoulders because they're just so narrow. Um, I guess that's why it makes great sense to have a personal bra fit for you, especially when you're outside of the normal range of, <laughs> of bra fitting or bra making, because there are, these are two extreme on two extreme of the spectrums. And so there, but they are dealing with different, we are dealing with different aspects of the bra in terms of if you smaller waist, um, small waist with small cup size, that presents its own challenges versus small waist, large cup sizes, or even large, large waist, small cup sizes. It's just a lot, a lot of variations in there. Yeah. Like you can't take a wire that would fit me, you know, that would be like this wide and put it on somebody that has a small boob on a 46 inch rib cage, right? Like that, it just proportionally doesn't work, mm -hmm. right? So, because that would only be like half of their, mm -hmm. their boob, right? So just because they have a smaller cup doesn't mean the area of the cup. Does that make sense? It does. And this also reminds, is a reminder when women are gaining or losing weight, this is why it's important to, you know, make sure you go to a bra fitter so that you know you can maintain your proper fit in a bra. Yeah, and I'm sure I'm not very well versed in the ready to wear um, industry uh, with different brands and styles and shapes and that sort of thing. But my experience with weight loss is sometimes people you lose in the cup, but sometimes the wire changes with it and sometimes it doesn't but then the rib cage gets smaller. So it's being able, I would say, communicating those goals and concerns when you go in saying, hey, can we get something that I can wear as I size down so I don't have to keep going in as often and I can get a little bit more wear out of my bra or do you guys um, are in contact with a tailor and they can just bring the, the um, back band in for me as until I just can't modify it anymore. It reminds me of I had people who wish that they had smaller band sizes available because um, most bra brands will go to a 28 at the mm -hmm. lowest, but even sometimes that can be hard to find. So it's like if you are a 26 or even possibly smaller, then mm -hmm. you're looking, you still have to get a 28 or if that's not offered a 30 or 32, something like that. So that makes yeah and it's the same at the other end of the spectrum like once you get above that 40 or 42 band it's it's very hard to come by as well mm -hmm. what would you say are some perks for women with small breasts and are there any perks for you um he can the bras for them at, um at, at less fabric maybe yeah, it is less fabric. The fitting is a little bit different, but it's still kind of the same. Um, we can go without support. Like we can stick on some nippies or those silicone nipple covers and put on a cute backless dress and head out. Uh, when I got married, I didn't wear anything under my my wedding dress. I, I didn't have to. Um, but I also grew up going through my teenage years in the 90s. So a lot of those like shelf bra little slinky tank shirts I didn't I didn't need to wear anything else underneath of it so um I want to say I was the opposite I was like going for the push-up and the extra padding to make them look bigger versus you know trying to hide them um sound like a perk is saving some money uh, yeah <laughs> In a way, or you can wear those cute little um, slinky numbers or the really pretty ones that you see in the big box stores. Those are the ones that I got to choose from. I didn't have like my husband calls it the big band-aid beige or black or white options, right? Or they're scratchy and they're itchy. 
right? Like it's like all of a sudden, sometimes the quality of materials change when you get into bigger sizes. I don't know. I, that's what I've heard. Like, oh, this lace is itchy or why is it scratchy and rough on the inside? So mm -hmm. I think one of the things that happens with fitting a small bust is all of a sudden they get to see their natural profile. Let it be either if I use foam or an unlined bra, all of a sudden it just fits and it's comfortable. Yeah. That's, mm. That's interesting and good to know out there for you. For, there's there's perks. <laughs> more it, ways it, than one. Yeah, like the opposite for somebody who has more surface area to cover. Um, those are almost wonderful to deal with too, because you can use some beautiful lace with some bigger like pattern designs on them where on somebody's you know piece that's only this big versus this big you can see how like you can play with patterns and material a little bit differently and it has a total different look to it from that creative perspective I see where you're mm -hmm. going with that <laughs> mm -hmm. now do you with blush bras do you have your own bra line or do you only provide you only make bras I only provide um custom made bras. So okay. it's a process that we go through for measuring for you. Okay. And then what um do you what is the smallest cup size you you've made? I'm terrible at bra math. <laughs> bra all, math. Yeah, it's all related to the ratio of underband to mm -hmm. full bust, right? So the smallest band I have made, um believe it or not, it, it fits my my almost 10 year old. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Madison Alexandra on either TikTok or Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, her rib cage is less than 24 inches. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the smallest band I've made. Um, so they have their own issues. And then the smallest cup I've made, I think we're in that 26, 25 inch rib cage range. Um, and then her full bust would have been what, 27 inches, maybe. Okay. I've also done a bralette version for a lady. Again, 26 inch rib cage, super tiny, you know, five feet tall. And uh, we had to make something to hold her foobies. That's what she called her fake boobies in. She called them foobies. So we had to make a pocket. Um, and it was just a bralette. She didn't need a wire because all the bralettes that, she would try even kid sizes it just wouldn't it just didn't fit proportionally for her so um with a double mastectomy that's that's a zero cup really yeah yeah we talked about because um apparently that there is this on this if you think about when you were learning integers on the line graph you have the zero we're going forward but then they're going backwards well um you have a then you have double A, triple A, and it goes down that way. So that was something interesting we, we learned while we were doing some research on, on smaller cups. So when you said the 26, 27 ratio, that would be but uh, bra math. I'm not doing that right now. It is bra math. So <laughs> my understanding, I, I was going to say it'd probably be an A cup because it's a one inch difference. Yes. But relation to what? Like an A cup on a 32 inch frame the volume is going to be different than an A cup on a 26 inch. Yeah. So I go by numbers. So it depends on the depth of the cup. So, so you, you're the, the you, apex. The people you work with will walk away knowing they won't get like a general cup size. They're just going to get their numbers, their measurements. I have a chart to try and convert it to to give you a kind of idea if you are going to go shopping in a store sizes to maybe look towards but um that's up to the bra fitters I'm gonna say because they're gonna know their product and oh, they're gonna take measurements right um when you get into those sizes I don't know why wouldn't you just leave it up for, to the professionals to fit you because they've they've seen it all and they can kind of jump in and say, hey, you're this shape, this type style will work best on you. Uh, I used to work in feet as a podorthist. So um, custom orthotics, gait posture and professional foot shoe fitting. So it's the same sort of idea. It's like, well, when, when you start to see lots of feet over and over again, and you see how they move, you can recommend certain brands of shoes to fit those feet. 
that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I can use. Pardon? I said that's something I could use. Oh, the feet or the bras? Both, but the feet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the feet. I had yeah. a, I have flat feet, and and then I had an ankle injury, so I could use that. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I guess we say, who would you say is your target customer, or even just who you, who your customer typically is? Uh, I'm going to say anybody who um, has an issue with generally shopping for bras. Mm -hmm. So if they have a hard time and they, I don't want to say have given up, but they're, they're looking for something down another route where if I could just get something that fit and was comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. I do offer also other services for those that are, can sew or want to learn how to sew. I also do patterns. I've done hey, can you sew me up a bra? And then can I purchase the pattern afterwards and try my hand at it? Um, they can do that as well. So generally speaking, it's usually larger sizes, but everybody deserves to have a one well-fitting bra and one that they're not pulling and tugging at every day or all day long. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When it comes to um, the customers that you serve, do you find that they generally want padding or they opt for no padding? Generally, no padding or unlined, although some, I don't do a padded bra on the first one just because we got to get the fit dialed in and it's more, more expensive. Some people like a padded bra for modesty if they want, but um, most of the the people that I work with right now don't or we do um if it is it's smaller busted and sometimes if they have a slight asymmetry from their angle um I'll pad the extra side a little bit more to make it appear from the outside that they're symmetrical mm -hmm. I didn't even think about that and we have talked about breast asymmetry here but um like, duh, of course, with custom bra making for women who have breast asymmetry. So thanks for adding that. Yeah, you can definitely, uh, some people are more self-conscious of it than others. Um, of course, most, they're sisters, they're not twins, your boobs, right? So uh, there is always one side that tends to be a little bit larger than the other side, but sometimes, most of the time when you wrangle them all in and collect it all and put them on the right side of the wire they actually are pretty much symmetrical but of course what you see looking down is different than what somebody sees looking at you if that makes sense and you see it like 150 times more than anybody else would realize so yeah I haven't had where people need different size wires but I have had different accommodations needed on either side mm -hmm. Would you say that there are steps that you have to take to maintain quality while offering a, um, an array of sizes for women, like for the smaller sizes to the larger sizes? Is there anything that you have to do? Sometimes, well, the materials are the same if that's what you're inquiring about, but sometimes when you get to the bigger sizes, I have... I prefer to use a firmer elastic or I double up the backband material. Um, so it's a, just a little bit more burlier that way. Sometimes if other people need extra support uh, within the cup, then it can be added in there where you can get away with some of those things, not all of those things on a smaller size, right? Because you're not, this, the support and the it's the bra has worked a little different when you have more weight to support. Yeah, mm. absolutely. <laughs> um, when you wear your bra that you make for yourself, what's your favorite part about that? Ah, uh, I like the sewing aspect of it, like as it's coming together, right? Oh. And you can start to see it, and it's it. That and then also putting it on 
and realizing, oh, wow, this is just perfect. Like, this is the shape I was looking for. I don't have it pulling and digging, right? Like that sort of thing. That's kind of my favorite part, that relief that people get as well when they put it on. Mm -hmm. Try on your masterpiece. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that final because <laughs> it's either going to be an epic fail or it's going to be a dream come true <laughs> that's the way I look yeah. at it <laughs> mm -hmm. um it, are there any other issues that you see that you're looking to help to fix in the future when it comes to bras I don't know like I'm I'm gonna say that generally not everybody can or every single bra company out there can do every single size right like that's a lot of a lot of sizes so i think it's so hard to say that you know they're you know do they stick within a size range you can't serve everybody right so You've got other brands that are going smaller or whatever they specialize in, but then I guess it's being able to come to everybody's, the front of their mind saying, oh yeah, like this is where I'm at. So I need to go towards this style or this brand because they offer this fit in this style. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know if I'm going to ever have a niche market because, or maybe my niche market is those that don't can't find anything where they're at in their current location so they search me out if that makes sense that makes perfect sense <laughs> yeah um where would you like to see yourself in the next 10 years hopefully getting this a little bit more streamlined <laughs> you know every every time you do it and you learn you know there's some patterns patterns um there's some similarities the more people you measure and the more you do it you start to see where things need to be um adjusted and altered so kind of refining that craft my daughter is going to be 10 and she kind of was like but mom maybe you can teach me how to sew them and then we can actually get them sewn up quicker um i can we do this yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, a bra doesn't go together in minutes, it goes together in hours, depending on how much of a good job you want to do and what the material materials you are using. So like a final sew will take probably about three hours from cutting it all out and putting it together versus a mock up can take way less because you're just running it under the machine. Like it doesn't have to be super precise. It's pretty precise, but not super precise so I don't think people realize the intricacies that go into bra making as well mm -hmm. I'm sure they don't. <laughs> Pardon me? I said I'm sure they don't there's a lot of people who don't realize when it comes to bras or just garment making in general or like I had read somewhere that um I don't know how old the book was but they were saying you're ready to wear bra goes together in 12 minutes um, what? sure yeah when you're in an assembly line and each mm -hmm. machine does something specific you know as you're going down um I, I can't confirm or deny that it was just something that I had read <laughs> so yeah when everything's being mass produced it's a little bit different than what's being sewn on my domestic machine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh where can people find you if they want to get their custom bra? I am available over Instagram. Mm -hmm. So usually people um, contact me over that at blush bras, all one word. Uh, and then through there, I have an email of elegant bras at gmail.com where they can come in and inquire. I have a Facebook, but my, I don't want to say it's personal. I have like a business Facebook and a personal Facebook and I want to say my Instagram is connected to the personal side of it yeah. so I want to say Instagram is probably the best place to get a hold of me um I'm always interested in names so how did you come up with blush bras 
<laughs> it was uh my Instagram handle beforehand was perfect fit bra YYC. YYC is the Calgary airport code. Uh, my brother-in-law had given me that name. He was in marketing, advertising and marketing, and it just kind of flew off his tongue. I was like, what should I call myself? Um, but I thought that was a little bit egotistical. So I had to figure out something to change it. Uh, I had a uh, body scrub in my drawer and I got out of the shower and I was like, wait a minute, I really like the way it was called blush body scrub, I think is what it was called. And I was like, oh, that's really nice. Cause I had toyed with lush, but lush could also mean like yeah. totally intoxicated. So I <laughs> didn't go with that one. Um, I didn't put much thought into it. I just kind of, oh, that's a nice word. <laughs> Maybe they blush when they put it on because they feel so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. And we always like to end on a positive note, although this whole conversation has been positive. Um, but what would you, lasting words of positivity, what would you offer to our audience? Don't give up hope. Um, there is, there are fittings, there are bras out there for everyone, I want to say. Um, you just have to be patient and work through it. Um, it's I don't want to say it's like breaking in new shoes, but you do have to give, I'm pretty convinced that depending on the style of bra you wear, your tissue will migrate that way. Um, so sometimes you have to retrain it to come back. Um, and that can sometimes be the most difficult to try and get used to. Um, my mother-in-law, I think, has more bras than I do in her drawer. And some days she will wear one and she will put it on and she will rip it off and be like, nope, this style is just not working for me today. And she'll try another one on. So it, it does happen with everybody. Um, yeah, and everybody, I, I think everybody deserves to feel and it can be life changing when you have a bra that fits, if that makes sense. Regardless, um, I'm kind of, I've had some interest in trans um, coming to see me as well as they start to change, I guess, <laughs> it would be the best way to put it. So, um, yeah, everybody deserves, nobody should be in pain or feel like they're being tortured. It's kind of like shoes, right? Um, you just got to keep, <laughs> keep going <laughs> I'm and I'm here if they need it. Yeah. <laughs> Even for your mother-in-law. Help her out. Pardon me? I said, even for your mother-in-law, help her out. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, this has been an enlightening conversation. Thank you for sharing your expertise, folks. You know where to find Christine if you need a custom bra. And we look forward to seeing you all on the socials. Again, thanks for joining us on this inclusive episode of BoomTube where we talk about all things breast, so that includes all sizes. Join us next week while we're being inclusive in another way. And we would love to hear your feedback. So make sure you hit us up. Let us know what you're thinking. Make sure you visit bluetoothpodcast.net where you can buy merch or you can purchase our cards or you can join us on Patreon. The opportunities are endless. So we look forward to seeing you next episode. Till then, adios.